Transcriptomics 1 is an introductory course on RNA-seq. In this course, we will cover key concepts needed to understand the analysis of gene expression data. To successfully complete this course, you will need a basic knowledge of cell and molecular biology. You will also benefit from taking the Introduction to Bioinformatics course we have available on edu.tbio.info site. The course is an introduction to next generation sequencing and the topics to be covered include both the quantitative and qualitative analysis of RNA samples, data preparation using next generation sequencing, as well as preparation of the table of expression from raw FASTQ files. We will also touch on visualization of high dimensional data using principal component analysis. The course features seven full length lectures, two quizzes for assessment, and provides users with a certificate upon completion of the six hour track. The year 2020 marks a 70 year mark since the discovery of the structure and function of the DNA molecule. It took almost 50 years from that time to sequence the first human genome. But soon after, the technology developed evolved rapidly. By 2015, the 1000 Genome Project brought a significant number of whole genome sequences to the research community. And in 2018, over 100,000 whole genomes were sequenced. Today, there is an ever-increasing number of genomic, transcriptomic, proteomic, and metagenomic datasets that are available to describe subcellular processes with highly detailed digital data. The omics technologies are used to explore the roles, relationships, and actions of the various types of molecules that make up the cells of an organism. Many types of omics data can be generated using NGS, or what is also known as high-throughput sequencing. The data can show detailed information about genomic variants, epigenomic regulation, as well as gene and isoform expression. This online course is built to provide a complete overview of the biological background, key terminology, and basic concepts you will need in order to start analyzing RNA-seq data. From a deeper review of the central dogma of molecular biology, we will go through a background of how data works and what it represents. After this review, we will apply this understanding to learn about the logic of building an RNA-seq pipeline. In the review of the biology behind RNA-seq, we will talk about transcription and how that process takes place in the cell. In this lesson, we will also learn about alternative splicing and various gene isoforms produced as a result of the transcription process. There are many steps in the process of converting a DNA sequence into a protein product. In this course, we will focus on the brief outline of transcription, giving special attention to the steps you should keep in mind as you study transcriptomic data. The process of transcription kicks off with RNA polymerase adding complementary nucleotides to a DNA template strand. Various proteins bind to the polyadenylation site near the three prime end of the pre-mRNA molecule. Next, a cap and tail are added to the respective 5' prime and 3' prime ends. Non-coding introns are removed and the exons are joined together. Finally, the 5' prime cap is recognized by a nuclear pore complex, signaling the export of mRNA from the nucleus to the cytosol. We will also learn about the sequencing process. Transcriptome sequencing is a major advance in the study of gene expression because it allows a snapshot of the whole transcriptome rather than a predetermined subset of genes. To study this data, we will learn about processing pipelines that turn raw reads into structured data ready for analysis. Sequencing data is stored in several different file formats. For example, FASTQ files provide us with reads from the sequencer. It is a text-based file format that stores nucleotide sequences of reads and quality scores for each letter. FASTA is a text-based file format representing DNA and protein sequences. Typically, this is the reference file for the genome. Then we have the genome transfer format, or GTF file, which contains genome annotation. For example, the GTF will store the start and end of each genomic element, exon, isoform, and gene. To process next generation sequencing data, we must first map reads onto the reference genome. To do so, we have to know where on the genome we have exons. This information is in the GTF file. Then we can take sequences from the FASTQ file where we have short reads to align some annotated position on the genome. The genome reference gives us information on where the gene is located and what exons are on that gene. Then, as different isoforms are created from this single gene reference, different reads are mapped onto specific exons. 
As you can see from this GTF file example, on chromosome 15, we have an exon that starts and ends at a specific place and belongs to a given gene and transcript ID, etc. To understand why other steps are needed in the RNA-seq analysis pipeline, let's look at the expression of genes and how data can be used to study this. This is the reference genome, where you have gene A, gene B, and gene C. Not everything is transcribed. For example, gene A and gene C are transcribed, but gene B is not. The product is RNA, which gets shattered into pieces of cDNA. There are adapters that are attached to the beginning and the end of each fragment. This nucleotide information is amplified using PCR and is then only read by the sequencer. And this is where our analysis steps start. RNA pipelines typically include three main steps, pre-processing, mapping, and quantification. Pre-processing is needed to clean up our data by removing the adapters, trimming some of the reads, and removing the PCR duplicates. This is important because PCR amplification is not uniform across all reads. Then, we take up the cleaned up read sequences and map them onto a reference. Using the FASTA file for the sequences of the genome and the GTF file for annotation. Based on the quality of annotation, we can use the various strategies for mapping. Once this step is complete, we have to quantify expression levels and give each expressed element a number. To help remember this information when building our pipeline, we will use a specifically designed interactive platform for practical exercises. The platform is color coded and helps establish a logical connection between the theoretical aspects of data analysis methods and the practical steps needed to achieve a biologically interpretable result. The course will also explain the pipeline results. From raw read sequences, we now have structured data where columns are sample names and rows are gene and isoform IDs in ensemble format. Inside each cell, we will find the quantified expression level. This course is part of the transcriptomic series that will cover other important aspects of RNA-seq, processing, analysis, and biological interpretation of gene expression. The online courses are supplemented by additional resources we provide to our dynamic bioinformatics community. These include regular online webinars, project examples, and training programs. We regularly review the course content to make sure we keep the information up to date and user friendly. Thousands of students, faculty, and researchers from around the globe are successfully using these resources to learn bioinformatics, as well as apply these analysis tools to various projects in biomedical studies, agriculture, and biotechnology.